What's up, guys? War here. Welcome back to the channel. So to continue our beginner series going into Path of Exile 2, today's video, we're going to be talking about skill gems and how they work in Path of Exile 2 to help you guys get a better understanding of how skill gems work, your support gems, as well as some few extra new things that Path of Exile and the guys at GGG added to uh, Path of Exile 2. So let's dive right into Path of Exile 2 skill gems and how they work. So as you guys can see right here on the screen, um, let's get a, a straight baseline. Skill gems are your skills, excuse me, uh, they are your skills and how your skills work in Path of Exile 2. So I'm gonna come over here to plan your skills, POE2 skills here. So your skills are essentially what your abilities are and the stuff that you're using. So skill gems are essentially just your skills. It's the attacks that you're going to be using. So for example, if I come in here and I just search lightning, uh, lightning bolt as an example. So lightning bolt is the actual skill that I will be casting. Okay, over here to the end game, if I pull this up, this is the skill that I'm using. For example, we just equipped fireball to this sorceress and this is the actual skill that you're using which is fireball you can see it down here or what was it it was uh fireball with something else on here but fireball is essentially your skill so these gems are your skills and they're interchangeable so what makes this so different is that on the screen you have flame wall here which is a normal skill but it's not just dedicated to the class which is something that we talked about in our passive tree beginner's guide because skills can be interchangeable with other classes in the game. So you can use things. A good example of this is the new mercenary class, which is typically a crossbow um, class. In other ARPGs, the class would be basically you can only use crossbows, right? And then you could only use crossbow skills. However, in Path of Exile, that is not the case. You could use a regular bow and then use bow skills, right? Like you could just use or what could be considered a bow skill or that is used with a bow for that class. So skill gems are your skills and they are completely interchangeable to your character. If we go back here to this, uh, this kind of build thing where you can just look these up again, like if this was my character, I could come in here and, and equip if I have, you know, Arctic armor I could add or I could add, you know, like poison, something like toxic growth. I could add this. You can see that the skill gem is has certain requirements and I could just add this in. So skill gems on the surface are just your skills that you're using to attack with with your character. Now, there is a bunch of different forms of skill gems, right? There is what is called your active gems. And shout out to POE, or excuse me, shout out to Mobilytics for helping with, the, with this guide. So there's a few different uh, skill types in here, right? There's a few different. And I'm going to blow this up just so you guys can see. So you have your active skills. These are gems that provide the abilities in combat. So for example, like lightning arrow. Lightning arrow is what shoots out of your bow. That is your active skill. Next is your support gems. These modify the behavior and effects of your skill. A good example of this is when we come in here to uh, like support gems here, a good example of how support gems work is you have one particular build. And I just wanna show you guys this because this is just kind of how these work. So on here, you have multiple projectiles. So this support skill is going to support and give two additional projectiles, but you do less damage, right? So instead of firing one grenade, you're going to see the mercenary here fire three grenades, right? Normally you shoot once. We're going to add it into the armor piercing rounds, and now you're going to shoot three grenades out, right? You got one grenade, and now it's going to shoot more. So same thing here, we're gonna add this greater uh, multi projectile on here. So that way you guys can kind of see how this works. These support gems, you can come in and add these things in. It's a really good example of how support gems can enhance a current skill, all right? They can really enhance a current skill. So it's gonna make you shoot more projectiles, right? And this is just one form of supporting. There's so many other things that can increase the you know, strength or the abilities of the class themselves. It can be really anything that's in here. So again, multiple projectiles here. See, you, we shoot one grenade, 
right? That's one one solid grenade. And then once we put it on, now we shoot three, you'll see three explosions. So that is how support gems can uh, help enhance or change the effect of a active skill gem or just your skill. Next, we're gonna have buff gems. All right, this is where you permanently or temporarily buff your character. This in PoE 1 was basically your auras. So aura of something like precision where it increases your accuracy. This is a constant buff or a temporary buff, which is the former auras from the first one. This is just to enhance your character. Next, uncut gems and meta gems. These are what are new to Path of Exile 2. So an uncut gem is where you find and choose where you put in your either active support or buff skill into that slot. So we'll talk about this in a second. So let's go ahead and go through this. So active skills are just your skill gems, guys. They're gonna come in here and act like this. So you're gonna have comment, Arctic armor, arc, cast on shock. These are all just your regular skills. These are the active skills which will appear on your bar down here in the corner. So any skill that you put in here is going to appear on your bar. This is what you're gonna use to fight with. Okay, so next, right, they're going to be down on your skill bar. Next is the different types of gems or active skills that you can use. You have your melee attacks, ranged attacks, spells, and minion skills. So when you come in here and you see this, uh, this guy shooting, right, this mercenary, he is using a ranged skill. So this is a range skill. So... Uh, let me go ahead and just show show this one more time. You guys can see just see when he's attacking, that is a range skill. So if we come over here to these. I kind of want to break this down and just show you guys. So you can see on toxic growth here, it is an attack skill. It is a projectile. It does AOE. It has duration, meaning because it does poison damage. And then it requires a bow. You see how this requires a bow? It has level four. You have to be to use it. And it costs 12 of your mana to be able to use and it shows your attack damage percentage. It also requires, or excuse me, the gem level is level four and it shows the attack damage. Next is your required level, which is what your player level has to be at to use this gem, which is nine. And you also need to have at least 21 dexterity to use it. And you can also see that this requires a bow to use. And then below it gives a description of what the skill actually does. So you can see that there is some information here. I don't want this to be too confusing. Each skill has this. So if we come in here, we go click back to this and we do lightning arrow, because that's one of my favorites. Lightning arrow at level one, every gem that you will find initially will be at level one until we get into the uncut gems, which I'll talk about right now, or in just a second. It requires it's level one, you can get it and you just have to have a bow. So you could not use lightning arrow with, like you couldn't socket it into a crossbow. Right, like you can't use a crossbow in Path of Exile 2 to use Lightning Arrow. All right, next, skill gems and weapons. Again, this is the info that we just went over here. As you guys can see, projectile, the skill gem info, you got the name and skill type. So AOE, projectile, lightning bow, you got tags below this. You got the level, mana cost, attack speed, and damage which is what you see here. It's level one, it costs five mana to use. The attack speed is 90% of your base and you deal 70% attack damage. And then you have the requirements to be able to use the skill itself, which is level one and it requires a bow. All right. Now, if we can go in, we will talk about uncut gems in a second. So let's go talk about support gems a little bit further. So how support gems work is the same way which you guys already saw. Using, for example, using fireball with a multiple projectiles, it will cause one fireball to turn into three. So there's a wide variety of different support gems that are really good for using any kind of skill. However, what's really great is it, oops, excuse me, let me mute. What's really great about this is the fact that if we come over here, there's a really great section here when you're looking, each skill has a support gem recommendation. So I think this is gonna be really, really cool for players, especially new players, to kind of try to help them figure out, well, hey, I have Galvanic Shards here, which is this just like AOE cone of shards. Like what would be good to go with this? Like what would be a very, very good skill or support gem to add to this? Cause I don't know, I don't know what's good here. 
So if you come into your support gems and you select the skill that you're using, it'll show you the different tiers of skills that you can use or what is recommended to use with this skill to kind of get you going until you figure out something from either a build guide or some of your own theory crafting in and of itself. So Galvanic Shards is a really strong ability. You could add lightning damage to it, or in this case, double barrel. So you're gonna like, sh you'll be able to shoot two consecutively really quickly. Lightning Exposure, which is gonna add another element of damage to this, or just make them shock or whatever. I'm not exactly sure what a Lightning Exposure does, but it can be around that um, kind of thing, or Weapon Elemental Damage, which just adds more elemental damage to the attack. So there's a lot of cool things here, just like added Lightning Damage. Like there's a lot of really good things here that you can add to this to really get the skill going so it's very useful for you during your playthrough. I think it's a very good thing that they added here, right? And you can check any of your uh, skills there to see what is recommended. All right, next. So we have to come in here and talk about the additional mechanics. Uh, additional support gems you can link to a skill gem will increase the attribute requirement by five. So for example, right, with your fireball gem, it increases the dexterity requirement by five. So if your requirement was at least 10 dexterity, as soon as you add that support gem, you need to have at least 15 dexterity to be able to use the gem. Very straightforward, very easy, right? Um, next, buff gems. This is what auras were from Path of Exile 1. Okay, like I, like I said, and a good example is um, precision, which just made you do, had an increase in accuracy for your character, right? So it made, made sure that you're always were hitting with your ranged skills. So they changed these to buff gems and temporary, so auras and temporary buffs. So you have persistent buffs and then temporary ones, right? So nearby, this can affect you, your allies, or minions, right? These buffs are active until they're mainly turned off and reserve spirit to be active. So what this means is if you have 100 spirit and you're using a uh a buff it will take your spirit down because it's reserving it so how this works is is let's say i have you know an example is arctic armor which summons an ice barrier around you right and it absorbs incoming damage right they reserve spirit so let's say you have 100 spirit and in order to keep that um arctic armor up and active it costs 20 of your 100 spirit so now once you have that aura active you go from 100 to 80 and now you have 80 spirit left to do all of your other attacks with so if you have a skill that costs you know five mana or five spirit you have 80 spirit to use that attack with as opposed to 100 because you're using 20 of it to keep your buff up if that makes sense guys so these are Persistent buffs, which are active until you turn them off. And then you have temporary buffs, which are just short term and they're on a cooldown. So the same thing, those will cost spirit. And then those will give you a temporary buff like in speed or strength or damage or, you know, absorb damage, etc. So those are temporary. Those have a cooldown, which are really cool. Now, uncut gems, guys. These are the last ones that are new to Path of Exile 2. So I hope that... This video is going to be a little long. I hope that you guys are still with me and everything is making sense. Um, uncut gems. So they changed how gems work uh, from POE 1. So now you have an uncut, uncut skill gem, which allows you to select a gem or an uncut support and an uncut buff, which allow you to select these new gems. Uncut gems or uncut support gems, uncut buff gems and uncut skill gems. They look like this when you're going through and playing the game. When you find these, you will see that they are a level and then it creates a support gem up to level one. So what this means is as opposed to finding the skill gem itself and then you would socket it into a weapon or armor, instead, you're just going to find an uncut gem type. And then you'll see here that once you find it, you'll be able to click it and then this is where you can select the skill or support skill or aura skill that's going to go into that gem. You're basically cutting in a skill that you want to put there. So when you find these, they will be at various levels. 
and you can increase these by finding higher level uncut gems. So you can find them with higher level ones, right? So let's say, let's say that you found an uncut gem and it was level one, just like you guys saw here in this video, right? But then you found another uncut gem later in the game and it is level 20. You could either use that gem to upgrade or level up a current skill that you are using or just make a brand new skill of the one that you were using and then it's already higher. This is how you kind of gain experience because in the past, what you had was a gem that would gain experience to level it up. Now they don't have that. You just need to find higher level uncut gems to raise the level of a gem that you're currently using or make a brand new one. So uncut gems are basically the new way that we really have to use with gems, right? This is this is the way we can kind of level them up, make them stronger, which is pretty cool. Um, next is the probably going to be one of the most confusing mechanics, especially as a new player. So I'm going to try to use it with other games to kind of help. So meta gems are more complex, but they're basically a gem that triggers an effect. So for example, you will find an uncut gem that says cast on shock. So you need to build up energy in order for this skill to trigger. So you will gain 20 energy when you shock an enemy. So in this example, let's assume that you have to get to 100 uh, energy for this skill to trigger when you shock somebody. So it's similar to Diablo 4 with the runes. We're like, hey, you, you know, every time you uh, evade, you gain 100 offering. And once you you build 500 offering, it'll automatically activate the Berserker buff from the Barbarian. This is the exact same way. So when you gain energy from shocking a, a, a an enemy, once you reach the max of, let's say, 100, it'll cast the skills that you have in here so for example imagine you have the fireball gem set up and then when you shock an enemy with a lightning spell after shocking enough you trigger a barrage of fireballs and this is triggered for free okay this is triggered for free okay so this will just this is like an extra ability that can be put on to your character so i hope that that makes sense if you guys do have a lot of questions about this stuff feel free to ask me down in the comments and i will do my best to answer all of those questions okay so these are the different types of skills that you guys can use these are the different types of i don't even know why this is on there these are the different types of skills that you guys can use there is the active support buff uncut and meta and then you can you can mix and match them however you want. There's a really nice way to have suggestions for your gems to help you out along the way, which I think is absolutely fantastic. Um, shout out to GGG for doing this. I think that's super cool. Um, now, one last thing before we get out of here with this video, because I know it's going to be a little long. Each character can only have what is it, seven or nine skill. So eat, all classes have access to nine active skill sockets, which can be used as you please. Skill gems can be further modified by support gems. So what this means is, is that on your skill bar, as you guys see here, you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So there is nine different skills that you guys can use, okay? You can have nine and you can Put whichever skills that you want with any support gems that will support it and any um, buff gems that will also support that gem. So you can put support gems and buff gems onto an active skill gem to make that skill better. Okay. And then you can tack on meta gems as well. So you get nine. Okay. And you get to choose however you want to use these. It does not matter. It is totally up to you. Um, coming out but what's great is is that it has the menu and you can go through each of the weapon types and just see the different skills that you want to use that require that weapon type so it makes it very very easy okay so active skills get placed into your window as you guys saw here right under your skill bar makes it very easy you can move these around any way that you want 
Okay, so you only get nine. All right, you only get nine. Now, one thing about support gems is that it can only be put on to one skill at a time. So in this example, when you see the multiple projectiles here, so if you want the multiple projectiles, which cast three grenades instead of one, to be on this grenader skill, you cannot also get another greater multiple projectiles and add it to another skill. You can only do it once per skill, okay? However, you can move these around. So you can see the now we're moving it from explosive grenade to high velocity rounds because you can only have one of these. So it makes it to where like, okay, I, I don't want to use it on explosive grenade. I want to move it onto armor piercing rounds. So you can only have one, so keep that in mind. Okay, so if you be very careful about how you want to build up certain skills. So, because there's some that, like as you can see here, that rapid shot is going to have different support skills than um, volcanic grenade. These skills are going to be completely different. Um, all the skills here that are on hailstorm rounds will be different than rapid shot as well. So just keep that in mind. That is something that they added that I really do like. So shout out again to Mobilytics here for helping um, with this breakdown of how skill gems work. I can link this down in the description, guys, if you do want to read over this. Um, I think it's very, very good information. Again, this is just a very baseline of how skill gems will work inside of Path of Exile 2. Um, once we get into early access and I'm able to play the game some more and just kind of check things out more in depth i will make an update video for you guys but if you guys have any questions seriously just ask me down in the description below okay let me know down in the comments if you guys have and not in the description in the comments if you guys have any questions i will answer all of them uh, make sure to like the video guys it really helps out with the algorithm on top of commenting thank you guys so much for watching um as always stay gaming i'll see you guys in the next one peace